I am sad to say that we're going to be closing off our Building Together series tonight. I've been enjoying it. It's been a, a, such a good, good series out of the book of Nehemiah. And, and I've learned so much this month. And we're, gonna, we're going to be closing it out tonight and jumping into a new series next week that you do not want to miss out on. And so that's going to begin next Wednesday. But we talked about in Building Together out of the book of Nehemiah, and you can turn, you can turn there, keep your, keep your uh, uh, fingers on Nehemiah chapter 2. We're going to be headed in there in a few, few seconds here. But we started off our series going over what Nehemiah did first. What is first and foremost in our lives? What does God want us to do first? I heard someone say it. He said, pray. That's it. That's what we talked about in, our, in the first uh, sermon of this series was pray first. Because how many know that Nehemiah prayed first? When, when, he, when he saw Jerusalem's walls in ruins, he sought God. He sought God in prayer. And that, that should be, that should be a, a motivation for us and, and, and steps of what to do in times of crisis in, and not, in, not only in times of, of bad, but also in times of good, amen? We thank God for, the, for those good times and the bad times. But Nehemiah knew what to do. He knew where to go for help. He sought God. And next, we talked about Nehemiah casting the vision. Getting it out to the people. And then how Nehemiah was able to, was able to connect them. To have teamwork. How many know teamwork does make the dream work? Amen? It truly does. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, you can't do it alone. Tell him you weren't meant to do it alone. Connection. We also talked about momentum. What it takes to keep going. How many know that we need to stay in the battle, amen? See, we're in, we're in for the long haul, aren't we? We're not, we're not in it, you know, just a, just a three-rounder. You know, we're going, we're going 15 rounds. <laughs> Some of you are like, oh man, I'm tired. I'm tired. I need Mick. Where's Mick to encourage me? Keep fighting, you bum. Remember that? <laughs> Some of us are in, are in a, 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 a battle of our life, battle for our life. And how many know that God is going to get you through? Amen. God is going to get you through. He's going to give you the stamina. He's going to give you the, the persistence, amen? He's going to give you the strength. He's going to give you wisdom as you, as you keep fighting that good fight. I mean, oh, the battle is already won. The battle is already won. But the enemy tries to lie to us and say that, that you know, he's, he's the champ. He's the victor, amen? How many of you know that he's the chump? He's been beaten. He's under our feet, in the name of Jesus. And we need, to, we need to let him know his rightful place. And that's under our feet. Some of you need to let the enemy know where he can go. <laughs> I'm telling you, I should have been a rapper. Maybe in, you know, later on. Who knows? Who knows what God, what God has in store? So tonight, we're going to be talking about empowering others empowering others because this is what nehemiah did he empowered others to get the job done you see nehemiah understood as we talked about before that he couldn't do this alone he understood that this was a job that was a task that was way too big for himself and he understood that he needed to get the people to see what he saw. 
John Maxwell said this. He says, leaders become great not because of their power, but because of their ability to empower others. And it's so key, it's so true, because Nehemiah did this, and he did this so well. He was able to, to congregate these people and was able to, to get them to see, as I said, what he saw and to get them to work together. How many know how difficult it is to get people to work together? If you've ever, if you ever had the task of overseeing a project, you know how difficult it is for people to work together. You think of your places of employment. You know, all those who are, you know, making good money. And they can't even work together. They can't even, they can't even, you, you can't even see unity in, in the work group sometimes. And they're, firing, they're, they're fighting and they're bickering. They're going at it. This one wants to do this and this one wants to do this over here. But both of them don't want to listen to what they've been told to do in the first place. And Nehemiah had a great task of leading these people to rebuild what had been destroyed. And he understood that in order to get them to do this is that he had to empower them. He had to pour into their lives. You know, I'm sure Nehemiah had his times where he just... He just maybe wasn't feeling it. Maybe he was tired. See, but it was the supernatural outpouring of God through his life into those that he was leading. You have to understand this. Because it doesn't matter how you feel. What always matters is what God can do through you. That's what matters. It doesn't matter how you're feeling right now. It doesn't matter what took place today. All that matters is that knowing who the God you serve is and what he is capable of doing in your life. Because my Bible says that with God, all things are possible. That's what my Bible says. I don't know if yours says any different. If it does, throw it away. <laughs> it's not the real thing. Because that's what his word says. Anything is possible with him. That means that anything is possible through you because of him. So we're going to look at three things here tonight. That Nehemiah did to empower the people that he was leading. And how we can use this in our own lives. How is this applicable for us? Number one, Nehemiah, he had to motivate. Say it with me, motivate. I read this story. It, says, it said this, it said that to get, to get employees to work on time, a Michigan company provided 45 parking spaces for 50 cars. <laughs> How many know that's going to motivate you to be on time? Right? That next day, you're not going to miss out on a parking spot, I guarantee it. But there's ways of motivating individuals. You know, I'm glad that we don't do that here at church. <laughs> But in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 18, Nehemiah reminded the people of the danger and the disgrace they found themselves in because of the status of the wall. And he spoke these words in verse 18. And he says this, he says, Then I told them about how, gr how the gracious hand of God had been on me. And about my conversation with 
the king. See, what was Nehemiah doing? Well, he was letting the people know. He said, look, I'm here to let you know that I have God's favor. I'm here to give you a report of what God is doing. How many like those kind of reports? I love those reports. I love to hear from other people of what God is doing in their life, of what God is doing in their cities, of what God is doing in their homes. I love hearing those reports. And this is what Nehemiah was doing. He says, let me tell you how God has been so favorable in my life. He said, I went to the king, and I asked him for permission to start rebuilding. And can you imagine their faces? Because it had been in ruins for years. Can you imagine their faces when Nehemiah was saying this? I'm sure many of them thought that he was, that he was talking crazy, that it was a hopeless situation, because it had been like that for so long. And so when Nehemiah starts talking and telling them that, 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 that he went to the king, they're probably thinking, oh, here we go. Here we go. We've heard this before. Right? Come on. Let us have it. What's going what's gonna, to what's gonna become of us? Is this going to be forever? Will we ever get out of this rut? How are you going to help us? But instead, Nehemiah gave a good report. Instead, Nehemiah came to them and said, no, I went to the king and it was good. God gave me favor. See, because I prayed first. Because I sought God, I had things go God's way. And we're going to see some rebuilding in this city. We're going to finally see some restoration. What do you think it did for the people to hear Nehemiah give these good words? What do you think it did? It motivated them. It encouraged them. I'm sure it excited them. Yes, this is awesome. I can't believe it. This is so good. Because it says in verse 18, as it continues, it says, they replied at once, yes, let's rebuild the wall. So you see, they were excited for the news that they had received. The Bible says, so they began the good work. See, Nehemiah was telling them, we can do this. We can do this. We can rebuild Why? Because God is on our side. God is helping us to build. It's not just us. Don't look around and think this is all we have because we have the mighty power, supernatural hand of God helping us as well. See, how many know that evidence of God's clear involvement is a strong motivator. It really is. If you've ever led someone to Christ through prayer, what does it do for you? It motivates you. It motivates you. The the next thing you're thinking is, who else can I pray for? Who needs some prayer? You're asking everyone. You're stopping cars in the middle of the street. (laughs) If you've ever prayed for someone for healing and they receive that healing, what does it do? It motivates you. I got to keep praying. This is this is amazing. God is real. Prayer works. How many know prayer works? How about when you experience peace in those difficult circumstances in your life, it motivates you. God, I'm, I don't know how this is happening right now, Lord, but I know 
what I'm going through, but I feel I'm at peace. I have peace in my mind. I have peace in my heart. What is going on? We come to the conclusion that it's only God. And that's the way God operates in our lives. Where you have no other, you have no other conclusion but to know that it is, it is not you. It is not anyone else. It is a supernatural power of God. See, earlier in our series, we talked about how Nehemiah had the people build the wall that was closest to their homes. We talked about what that did for the people. It caused them to be excellent. Remember that? It, it, it caused them to put a lot of effort into what they were doing and the building that was being performed because it was close to their home. And they don't want to look out their home and see a wall that was done improperly. And so Nehemiah knew how to do this. He knew how to motivate. He knew how to get the people, get them to develop that, that, that hunger and that passion for work. Can you imagine, can you imagine looking at this city, all the miles of wall that, would, that needed to be rebuilt? And looking at it and thinking, man, how is this going to get done? And there you had Nehemiah encouraging and motivating and empowering them to do God's work. Not only did he motivate but he also delegates. Motivate, delegate. The definition of delegate is a person sent or authorized to represent others. To entrust. I read this story. Listen closely to this one. It says a brand new hotel employee was asked to clean the elevators and report back to his supervisor once the task had been completed. The end of the, the, end of the day came and the employee never, re, never reported back. The supervisor simply assumed that like the rest of those he had hired, the employee had quit. However, after three days, the supervisor bumped into the new employee. He was inside one of the elevators cleaning it. The supervisor asked, You haven't been cleaning these elevators for three days, have you? He says, Yes, sir, I have. He says, This is a huge job, and I'm not done yet. He says, Do you realize that there are over 45 of them, two on each floor, and sometimes they're not even there. I'll give it a little while to sink in. See, in delegation, you are entrusting someone to complete a job, right? You are... You are putting your trust in someone and, and, and saying, and saying uh, you know what, I'm going to entrust that, that you're going to get this done. So I'm going to delegate this to you. you know, many people think that delegation is just something to do so that you can give others work so that you can sit back and relax. That's not delegation. See, delegation is being able to give someone an opportunity to learn. Saying, you know what, here, I'm going to give you this task because, I, because I, I, I want you to grasp the knowledge of it so that, so that at one point in time, you can, you can maybe take my job. Nehemiah understood the need. He understood that he couldn't do it alone, and he seized the opportunity to teach the people. 
See, the definition of empower is to make someone stronger or more confident. And this is what, this is what takes place in our lives. As our leaders, as our pastors empower you and I to give us the, to, to give us the opportunity to give us the tools, the resources to complete said task and to be successful. No one wants to see someone else fail. The other definition of empower is to give someone the authority or power to do something. See, if we're going to do this, we need to be willing to take chances on people. Give someone an opportunity. I remember in my life, growing up in church, never ever thinking that I could be able to speak in front of someone until someone gave me an opportunity. I wasn't even seeking it. I didn't ask anyone to you know, grab a mic and start speaking. I was asked. I was given an opportunity. Why? Because I believe someone, someone saw something in me that I didn't even see myself. And this is what takes place in our lives, is that those over you will see something in your life that you may not see, but God has shown them and they, and they come to you and they ask you, hey, uh, do you want to do this? And you say, well, you know, uh, I, I really don't have time. You know, I got, I got a busy schedule. No, you can make time for it. You can do it. Sometimes we're just, we're just afraid. Sometimes we just don't know what to expect. Many times we, we, we limit ourselves. And God is just asking us to step out. God's not going to leave us alone. God's not going to set us up to be laughed at. God's going to equip you. So that next time that your, your, your leader comes to you and says, hey, I really need your help in this. Can you, can you, can you handle this? Can you handle that? Can you take over? I'm going to, I'm going to be gone for, for, you know, for a service or whatever. I'm going to be doing this. Can you oversee this? And in your head, you're thinking, I can't. But you need, you need to, to not speak those words over your life, but you need to speak, well, with God, all things are possible. <laughs> with God, all things are possible. So you know what? I'll do it. I'll do it. And you step out. Because I'm sure the people... I'm sure there were many who thought they could, this couldn't be done. And not only can this not be done, but how am I going to be used to get this impossible task done? Little did they know that God had given them the ability to do so. President Theodore Roosevelt once said this. He says, the best executive is one who has the sense enough to pick good men to do what he wants done and the self-restraint enough to keep from meddling with them while they do it. I mean, God isn't calling us to be a micromanager, amen? God is calling us to empower. To empower to give someone an opportunity to teach and to develop as many have done with us. I'm sure, I'm sure everyone here can think of an individual who, who gave you the opportunity, the first person to give you the opportunity to do something for the Lord. You could think of someone right now. I know I can. Someone who believed in you. Someone who, who, who took you under their wing and said, we're going to do this. You can do this. You're able. God has equipped you. 
and they saw something in you. And that's what it took. For the person that is waiting for you to speak those same words, that's what it's going to take. Be willing to take chances on people. Just have just as people have taken chances with us. See, the only way to make yourself indispensable is to make yourself dispensable. What do I mean by that? Well, in other words, if you're able to continually empower others and help them to develop so that they are capable of taking over your job, then you will become so valuable to that organization that you will become indispensable. Because you keep training and you keep, and you keep raising up uh, 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 those individuals who can do what you do. And that's what God is calling us to do. God, is, God isn't calling us to keep things for ourselves. I mean, oh, that's true. Those things that you've went through in life, those things that you've learned, it's not for you to keep, but it's for you to share. It's for you to impart into someone else. And say, this is, what, this is what God has shown me. And this is what I've learned. And I'm going to teach you everything that I've learned. So that you can do even greater. We know that famous saying, give someone a fish, he'll eat for a day. But if you teach him how to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. We're in the, God is given us the task of teaching. Yes, it's good to give. God wants us to give, amen? But he wants us to teach. Because it's one thing to give someone something, but it's another thing to teach them how to do it themselves. See, you can, you can give your kids this and this and this, but if you keep just giving them things, you're gonna end up hurting them. You gotta teach them how to, how to get it themselves. You got to teach them that, that in order to get some money to buy the things that they want, they need to get a job. Amen? This is important. We can't just keep giving things in that sense. God desires for us to teach. Not only did he motivate and delegate, but he also procreated. Many of you think, what do you mean procreate? Doesn't that mean making babies? <laughs> See, what I mean by this is that we are to reproduce strong believers. Because procreate means to reproduce. And this is what God has called us to do. To motivate, to delegate, and to procreate. He didn't call us to duplicate. Because how many of you know that everyone is different? We're not, we're not trying to make little mini-me's. Because we don't, we don't need two of us. As, you know, one of us is enough, right? Amen? Person sitting next to you, say amen. Yes. One is enough. So God isn't calling you to duplicate. He's calling you to replicate. To, I'm sorry, to procreate. To reproduce. And to build more. And to, and to, to, to teach more people to become strong believers in the Lord. See, everyone's going to take their own path in regards to them serving the Lord. But we're all, we're all going to the same place, right? Amen? We're all going to the same place. Hopefully that's what you think. 
Amen? We're all going to the same place. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, we're going to the same place. All right, good. We're on the same page here. There's no, there's no different heavens for, you know, whatever things you've done or have not done. See, but this is what Nehemiah did. He began to procreate. He began to, to empower leaders and to reproduce, reproduce those individuals who, who had the faith as he had, who trusted in God like he did. Who, was, who were able to see as he saw. I mean, no, it takes work. It takes effort. It doesn't happen by accident. See, Nehemiah developed successors. And how many know that there is, there is no success without successors <laughs> there is no success without successors we need them you need to be developing successors in your life this is key when it comes to finding your purpose one of your purposes is to teach and to develop I mentioned before that, you know, it's good to receive. You know, it's, it's good to, 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 to eat, you know, and to receive God's word. But God hasn't called us to be gluttons, spiritual gluttons in this place. He's calling us to, be, to, to teach and to give and to release. Amen. Develop those to represent you. Jesus chose 12 men to represent him. They were equipped with his authority as well. In Matthew 10, 1, says Jesus called his 12 disciples together. The Bible says, and he gave them authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and illness. He says he gave them authority. He developed. He developed successors. Because Jesus knew that he wasn't going to be here forever in the flesh. But that his ministry was only going to be for a little while. And he knew that he was going to be departing them. Not forever, but just for a while. And so what he did was he, he quit, equipped them to keep that moving forward, to keep the ministry moving forward, to keep that vision alive, to make sure that what God had planned uh, will be completed through them. And he did this, and he gave, the Bible says, that he gave them authority. And just as the 12 disciples were given authority, we have the same in Jesus Christ. We have that same authority. Jesus speaks in Luke 10, verse 19. And he says this, he says, Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. You need to underline that in your Bible or write, you know, Highlight it, whatever you got. Luke 10, 19. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. See, the same power that Jesus gave to the 12 disciples, he gives to you and I as well. You have that same power. Like I said, it doesn't matter how you feel right now. You have to, you have to understand that the, the power within you and I 
as children of God, that the Holy Spirit dwells within you. Within you, not outside of you, not close by, not in your car, not at your home, in you. And He is helping you. See, snakes and scorpions were symbols of danger and evil in the Bible. But God has given us spiritual authority. He's given us this. God has empowered you and I. He's empowered you. He's empowered you to do great works in his name. He's empowered you to do whatever he asks of you. He has empowered you to do things that you think you can't do. He's empowered you to be able to speak words of life to those around you. He's given you this power. He has empowered you to say, you know what, enemy? You're a liar. You're a liar. I'm not going to believe your lies anymore. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stomp on you like the, like the serpent that you are because God has given me spiritual authority over you. And we are to allow our lives to be used to procreate, to build those strong believers, to build those Christians who have that firm foundation. Their house is built on the rock. Why? Because your house is built on the rock. And because you knew how to build it, now you can teach others to do the same. God is calling you. He's calling each and every one of you. He says, you have the tools. You have the tools to build and to make healthy believers. You have them. You have them. Don't just hold on to them. Utilize them. Make sure that you are using them to their full capacity. Paul writes this in Romans 8, verse 11, as our worship team comes forward tonight. Romans 8, 11. Paul says these words. He says, The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. That same power. Nehemiah saw this. He saw it. He saw it when no one else saw it. He was, he was able to see what God can do before it was even done. But not only was he able to see it, he was able to impart it. He was able to empower others so that they can get the task done. He understood this is going to be this is going to be a great a great life lesson for all of these people here. Something they will never ever forget. This is going to be one of those pillars in their walk with Christ. Their faith, a faith pillar in their life where they saw God move where they experience the supernatural power of God and now it's a faith pillar in their life what are some of those faith pillars in your life What are some of those moments that God has brought you through in your life 
that today still stand as pillars in your life. Those moments that you will never forget, that you hold on to and you say, man, I know God is real. I, I know he's all powerful because I've seen him do this. What are those things in your life? I'm sure you could think of many of them. You were allowed to see these things take place in your life. To teach others. To now empower. I remember we were getting this ready and when we had sent out the, the text to the team to let them know what the series was gonna be about. Em, empower others was spelled emplowing others. <laughs> it was a mistake. Emplowering others. And it's funny how one letter can just change everything. I thought, it was, I thought it was very funny. We all knew what you know, we meant. But I thought, man, God doesn't want us plowing each other down. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> he, doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't want us trampling over each other and fighting with each other and cutting people down like plowing means. No, God wants to empower. He wants to empower you and I. He wants you to empower each other. No more plowing of each other. Nothing. No more. Let God use your life to build others up to build up to build up because we got some work to do we got some work to do i mean know the 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 battle that it, it, it's you know we're we we are we are still we are still in this race amen we're still in this race and we're gonna finish this race in the name of jesus we're gonna finish this race we're gonna finish it together We're doing this as a team. Just as Nehemiah did. To gather everyone and have the same mindset to be, as the Bible says, in one accord. We must do this as well. We struggle sometimes because we, we separate ourselves from the sheepfold. God says, no, 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 you need to come back. Our good shepherd says, no, no, you need to come back. You need to come back. You wandered off a little bit, and that's why, and that's why you're going through what you're going through, but I'm here to bring you back. I'm going to bring you back to the sheepfold. And we're going to keep working, and we're going to keep serving the Lord, amen? We're going to keep serving and serving and serving. And when you don't want to serve anymore, you're going to keep serving. Amen. You're going to keep serving as God has called you to do. We're servants of the Lord. We're servants of the Lord. Let's do it. As Nehemiah said to them, we can do this. We can do this. The battle, the, the victory is ours. The battle has been won. Let's walk victorious. As every head is bowed, every eye closed. Building together.